South Koreans have elected Moon Jae-in as their new president. Polls suggest the leader of the Democratic Party won by a large margin, but expectations for him to shake up the economy will be equally big. So who is Moon Jae-in? Well, he's the son of a North Korean refugee who fled the war in the 1950s. Moon worked as a human rights lawyer and was chief of staff from 2003 till 2008 under President No Mu Hyun, who tried to heal ties with the North. No committed suicide in 2009 as a corruption investigation closed in on him. Moon narrowly lost the 2012 presidential election to Park Geun-hye, who was impeached in March and is now on trial on bribery charges. But Moon won't have much time to celebrate his victory. The economy grew by a better than expected 2.7% on an annual basis in the first three months of this year. But household debt has been growing at an alarming rate. It stood at $1.2 trillion at the end of last year, up nearly 12% from 2015. Youth unemployment stands at more than 11%, near its highest level in 17 years, and nearly three times the overall jobless rate. And it faces intense competition from China. Many of the consumer electronics that made South Korea an industrial giant are also being made in China, but cheaper. So what does Moon plan to do? Well, one of his campaign promises was to create more than 800,000 jobs, most of them in the public sector, including bureaucrats, firefighters and social workers. He plans to spend nearly $4 billion a year to do this. But possibly his toughest task will be to unpick the web of connections between politicians and the giant family-run conglomerates that dominate South Korea's economy, or the Chaebols. Let's get some reaction now from South Korea. Last year, Park Geun-hye abused her national authority, and that angered people. I voted with the hope of not electing the same kind of president again in the future. For people currently living in South Korea, and for the next generation who will be our future leaders, I picked a leader who can lead us to become a healthy and sensible society, where people can feel proud to be citizens of South Korea. Joining me now live from Columbus in Ohio is Erdod Schenka. He's a professor at the Fisher College of Business at Ohio State University with a focus on Asian affairs. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Professor. Um, if you were advising Moon Jae-in right now as to what to do to curb the influence of the Chaebols, what would you be saying to him? Oh, that would be a tall task, and I'm sure that he is aware of that. This is something that has been talked about in South Korea for uh, many decades now. There have been a lot of promises, not much had happened. And the reason is that these troubles are so entrenched in the economy, in the political, in a social life, that it would be very, very difficult to make changes. Uh, I do not believe that Mr. Moon will try, at least not at first, to dismantle those troubles. This is something that will cause tremendous disruption in the economy. What I think he will be trying to do is change the rule of the game and in particular try to encourage or even provide incentive to a small and medium-sized enterprises so they can compete with the troubles. It may have to do with, uh, for instance, much more uh, powerful uh, antitrust uh, legislation and enforcement. It may have to do with uh, mm. uh, maybe set aside of uh, you know government and other public bids for small and medium-sized right. enterprises. Right. So I expect a series of uh, small right. and uh, medium steps toward right. that goal. Right. Professor Schenker, um, do you, judging by his history, by his background, do you think uh, Moon is the right man to try and tackle corruption in South Korea? I am not so sure. I mean, obviously, he comes in as Mr. Clean. He has a remarkable record as a former human rights lawyer. But between being Mr. Clean and being able to clean up, uh, there is a gap. And uh, he is an outsider of sort. 
And the question is, to what extent he will also have the uh, political power um, to take on uh, the troubles, which are, you know, extremely powerful uh, entities. He seems to have a mandate, having won in a landslide, but translating that into actual uh, action on the ground will be uh, very difficult. Right. For example, many of the smaller companies that mm -hmm. I mentioned are really dependent on the charbos okay. as uh, suppliers and so forth, and therefore they themselves may be reluctant to, um, you know, undertake them. Professor Oded Shankar, Ohio State University, thank you ever so much for joining us on Money Talks.